Hello. We're going to switch things. Welcome to the Writer's Dream. We're going to switch things up today. Uh, I'm going to be interviewing Linda Maria Frank, who is normally the interviewer on this show. She's going to be talking about her books and how she publishes them and a lot of other things. Uh, I've always been very curious about what a writer does and how they get their books published. So that's where we're going to go today. Hello, and Linda. Don't forget, folks, that we are on Facebook. You can find us on YouTube. Just look for my name, Linda Maria Frank. Click on my picture. And there are about 200 interviews with authors. Uh, so if you like to read or you want to write, there's a lot of good advice there. And there's a lot of uh, wonderful books uh, to hear about. And it, the best part is that it's all, just about all, local Long Island authors. Uh, you can catch us on Cablevision on Thursdays at 2.30 on Channel 115. And um, just keep watching those uh, programs, you Writer's Dream fans. And Mary, what have you got for me? Okay. Well, I'm really interested. We talked a lot about the Annie Tillery mysteries in the, in the last segment. But I'm really interested in the new book, uh, The Buccaneers <laughs> of... St. Fre yes. Frederick Island, because it is so different. It's such a departure from the other four. The characters are completely different. So let's talk about those first. They're hilarious. Okay. Well, the Buccaneers of Frederick Island, the inspiration for the Buccaneers was my experiences in Catholic school. I went to all Catholic schools. And I went to Catholic schools when Catholic schools were Catholic schools. <laughs> this, when they had the so rules. the book takes place in 1947. One of the most uncanny things about this was when I started it, um, the introduction to the book does talk about uh, you know, that particular time period and, and uh, my memory of my father picking me up from school in a storm and whatnot. But um, I have a wonderful il illustrator. Her name is Marianne Savage. She's done all my books, all my illustrations. And so we talked about the illustrations inside the book, not only the cover, but the inspiration, the illustrations inside the book. And she said, I want her to put for the first illustration um, a picture of the main character, whose name is Sprocket. <laughs> her real name is Lily. Uh, but she said, I don't know what a Catholic school uniform is. So, <laughs> and first of all, they're different from, you know, in 1947. So I described it to her. And I don't know if you can see this. Uh, you got to go this way. Yeah, I know. I, I have to turn it. There you go. <laughs> this is so funny. There it goes. There it goes. Uh, the camera reverses it. But the, the girl in the Catholic school uniform, the little Peter Pan collar and the jumper yep. with the braid, I have a picture of me at that time that looks just like it. So it's really <laughs> uncanny. But anyway, that was the inspiration for the book. And then, of course, the whole romance of this island, and, and it has caves, and it was first inhabited by a pirate, and the school was the pirate's castle, and there was, there was a story about a nun who was a ghost who inhabited the castle, and blah, blah, blah. And, and it's just, it was just a lot of fun. And uh, what happens in this book is uh, the main characters who are like eighth graders. Uh, there's, I think, three boys and three, girls. three boys and four girls, yeah. or four boys and three girls, with yeah. whichever. I have to think about it. But um, they form a club called the Buccaneers, and the name of the island, obviously, is St. Frederick Island. And <clears throat> what happens is they're very good kids. They're just, just the nicest kids, and they're raising money by um, trimming hedges and taking out garbage and doing all kinds of things for the inhabitants of the island to raise money to buy toys for poor children on the mainland, which is not really the mainland. It's sort of like Long Island is not the mainland either, but mm -hmm. at any rate, the money is stolen and they have to solve the mystery, and it goes from there. And um, the other characters in the book are uh, Lily's mother, who... Uh, the kids themselves are a riot. Each one of them is a, a little silly, okay. silly kid. And they have code names. And of course, Lily's code name is Sprocket. And they all have, you wonder why they have the names they have. And the names that they have are like um, Wingnut. Wingnut, and well, Wingnut, you can tell. 
Yeah, yeah well, wingnut is wingnut wing because he is a wingnut. Yeah. He's, he's silly. But some of the other kids are um, snap shackle. And you say, where are these? Why did you pick the ratchet? Yes, right. Why did you pick those names? Yeah. And the whole reason was is I based it on the idea that the kids had to do a science project based on little machine parts. And they like the names of the little machine parts, <laughs> and so that's those were okay. their code names. And they can, they come up with a code. It's just so much fun, and I had a lot of fun writing it. So um, so that's the Buccaneers. And actually, during COVID, I wrote another one. This is supposed to be a one-off. Mm -hmm. I liked it so much that uh, I, I decided to write another one. And one of the main characters in here is a, a man named Sibby, Sibby Fintel. And Sibby has like a Scottish accent, and he's a fisherman, and he's a rough and tumble guy, but he's really, you know, a goody at heart. And he's sweet on Lily's mother. Mm -hmm. So in the second book, Sibby uh, becomes the Bay Constable. And the Bay Constable is like sort of a policeman. He's like the ecology police. And um, the mystery revolves around that. And I'm not going to tell you anymore. Good. Oh, good, because I want to <laughs> read the book. Yeah. Now let's let's look at these characters because they really are. First of all, they're hilarious, and second of all, I mean, and the, the nicknames are just the code names are just great. Uh, but what I noticed was that they are a real departure from the characters in in uh, yeah, the there's, Annie there's, Tillery books. There's like there's no romance, for example. Well, they're not, much not, not an eighth grader. No, well, they're much younger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, they're also kind of odd. Well, they're nerds. All of them are a little, yeah. They're I mean, all they a little strange. I mean, they would have been called nerds then, but they're they're definitely nerds now. And uh, yes, and um, I don't. I, I guess it's because I was a nerd. I don't know. But um, one of my favorites is Ratchet. Now, I keep the turning this the wrong way. The other way. There it That's goes. It. And Ratchet thinks she's Amelia Earhart. <laughs> okay, she really doesn't think she's no. Amelia Earhart. <laughs> That's but hilarious. She, but but she. Tell them about tell them about that particular picture because I think that's very funny. Well, what happens in this picture is that um, she is given the task, in, in, and I, I don't want to give the whole plot away, but she's given the task of checking out a ferry slip. They live on an island, so obviously there's got to be a ferry that goes back and forth, and they're looking for the culprits. Okay, and so she's given the job as lookout, so she decides to disguise herself so she won't be seen. Okay, well, that's, that's so she disguise. won't be seen. <laughs> and I just thought that was just hilarious, that it was very and, funny. And the funniest thing to me was the interplay between the male and the female characters, characters in the yeah. Buccaneers, because the, the, um, they're always fighting with one another, yes. you know, there, and, and uh, especially Ratchet and, 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 and Wingnut. Yeah. And Wingnut is truly a Wingnut. Yeah. He's really a lot of fun. So. So that I just wanted to have fun. Yeah. And well, uh, th there's a Native community, a Native American community on the island, and th that's that's the more serious side of it, I think, yeah. because uh, one of the characters who is not a buccaneer gets herself into trouble, and she's part of the Native American community, and they kind of straighten the whole thing out. So th there's a lot in this book, and it's only <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's the shortest it's big I print think, of all and of them. short, yeah. and um, I want I wanted to write this for a younger readership. Yeah. And because I just thought it would be fun, and that's well, it is. It's I mean, again, I'm part of the older audience, but I found it fun. There were plenty of times when I was laughing. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. in this book. One of my favorite lines in this book is in the beginning, the kids are in school, and I remember, um, I remember the classroom like it was yesterday, and. So they're they're doing their pro they're uh, taking notes from whatever the nun is teaching. She's teaching about George Washington. It's a history lesson, and the whole essay that they have to write is they have to give proof and support the idea that George Washington would have made a great Catholic if only he had known better. <laughs> yeah. And so you know it's one silliness after yeah. another, and uh, well, I, I we hope that I haven't uh, insulted any uh, of the uh, nuns out there who have been teaching me. <laughs> well, one of my favorite things, and one of the things I laughed about so much, is the name of the school. 
and, and the abbreviation for the name of the school. So would you tell us how? Well, the, the name of the school is St. Becilius. Yes. <laughs> Who was the patron saint of? Mimes. <laughs> Mimes, yes, because in Catholic school, you learn to speak without ever moving your lips because you were never allowed to speak. <laughs> we weren't. We were only allowed to speak when asked a question by a teacher. Otherwise, even at lunchtime, we weren't allowed to talk. Mm -hmm. But we all don't want to talk. Mm -hmm. We were all mimes. Okay. So, yeah, it was fun. And But, but the, the um, abbreviation... For Saint Basilius, yes, yeah, it's Saint BS. Which, <laughs> you know, I I really laughed a lot about that. Yeah, it was fun, and and uh, going to Catholic school was a um, a character building experience. I have to say, I, I do not regret my Catholic school education, but I just thought I would have fun with it. Yeah, that really is good. Let's get into um, what you do after you actually write a book like this or the, or the Annie Tillery mystery. Well, in the previous show, um, I did say that it was, publishing the book was like birthing a baby. Yes. And marketing is like raising a teenager. So uh, marketing is the most difficult part, but there are many, many things that you can do. Uh, one of the things that you can do is, is to uh, have somebody do it for you, unless you're very talented in this area, and that's to get a website. You have to have a website. And name it either after yourself or one of your books so that you're easy to find. And uh, on that website, you should have direct links to purchase the books. Uh, you should have a description of the books. You can put reviews on there. You could put awards that you've won. That's another thing. Once you've published the book, there are, are a number of places that you can uh, join contests. And this is important because they, then they give you a little sticker. I don't think I have, yeah, there's stickers on the back of, uh, you don't have to show them, but. Um, is this one? Yeah, see, there's, there's two awards. And so, so but you get these lovely, the yeah, these lovely little stickers that say that you, that you won a contest, which is impressive to people, to readers. So you want to talk about that, but you want to, and you, and you have, there's only a window of time that you can submit a book to a contest because they want something that's new. That's part of the problem with writing a book is there's always pressure to write another book. The first thing they ask, well, maybe not the first thing, but one of the big pressing questions is, when is the next book coming out? You know, you're, you're barely, you're still sweating from <laughs> the first book, and they're saying, when is the next book coming out? So uh, it's good if you get an idea to write it down because uh, that's the next thing that you have to do. So you have to have a website. You can link the website to your Facebook page. You can link the website to, to almost anything. I mean, I, I link my website to the YouTube channel. Um, I have my newsletters yeah, on my website. That, yeah put reviews, and then I have a blog. I don't find that my blog is all that successful, but I managed to put a lot of information on it that I can pull up in other ways. Like, for instance, tonight, when I go home, because it's almost Christmas, I wrote a little Christmas story years ago that I love, and I want to put it on Facebook. But oh, okay. instead of putting the whole story on Facebook, I actually have a link because I put it on my blog. Okay. So. That's one way to get information to people. Um, you can also have, uh, you know, a pull-down menu on uh, suggestions for writers. So you can put a lot on your website. And websites, uh, a really nice website is fairly expensive. And if you're doing all of this with these links and whatnot, you really need a webmaster to take care of it, unless you're very good at this. Mm -hmm. Some people are, not me. So you have a, a webmaster? I do. I have, yeah, yeah. And he's he's... He's pretty pricey, but I think my, my website is beautiful. It is. It's gorgeous artwork. Uh, it's got everything on it. And, uh, you know, the, when I write a blog, it goes immediately there. The other thing that you can do, which is free, is uh, your books, no matter how you publish, and we'll, we'll get into yeah. publishing in a minute. That's my next question. But um, no matter how you publish, you're going to have to do a lot of your marketing and your books will end up on Amazon, because they just do, mm -hmm. okay? 
So on Amazon gives you the ability to create an author page, which is almost like a website. So you can put all your books there. You can put your biography. You can link it to your blog. You can put all of your book trailers. Um, you can put all that information on this free author's page. And then all of that information goes on to, can link to Goodreads, because Goodreads is part of Amazon. So you, you see what's happening yeah, yeah, yeah. You're creating a network. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the other things that you should do is look into uh, creating book trailers. Um, all of my book trailers are on my YouTube channel. Now, when you say book trailers, can you explain that? Yeah, all right. I'm sorry. A book trailer is, is like a few minutes. It's like three. It's like a teaser for a, for a movie. Okay. And what you do is you're explaining on a video enough about the book. It's almost like it's a cross between uh, an elevator pitch and a, and a movie teaser. So like you're a coming attractions on Just us. enough that people really, and you, and you want good artwork and photographs and just enough information so that people really want to read this book. And then you, you trot that thing out every once in a while. Like for instance, when I, I do a newsletter, I don't really do it, I have somebody who does it for me. Um, she trots it out like once a month and we, we put my, uh, my events and links to uh, the book. And then I usually put some special feature. I always, also always put one of these Writer's Dream, I feature one of the Writer's yes. Dream show. So there's a lot there. And um, so, so that's a good way also. You can also link to your blog. And you can put your book trail on there. So you've got blog, website, newsletter, Amazon author page, Goodreads, start a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Very, very simple. And one of the things they're talking about now, which I'm toying with, is TikTok. Because oh. TikTok is very short, like one minute yeah. videos. Yeah. So you can go on there and say, today I'm writing chapter 32 of the Buccaneers of St. Frederick County. County, you know. Island. I'm going to Maryland this okay. week. <laughs> St. Frederick Island. And I think this is what I'm going to do, but I'm not sure. You know, so you yeah. make these little videos and you try to get a following. So uh, everything is about getting a following. You know, who follows my newsletter? Who who actually clicks on it and opens it? Who reads my Facebook page? Um, and and there are ways that you can link all of this so that you put something on Facebook, it ends up on Twitter, um, and and some of the other social media. Okay. So that's that's a lot. And um, then you try to get interviews. I mean, the people, the authors who I interview, do this so they can put the interview on their website. Sure. And so that, uh, and then I advertise as well. So, and in advertise, you do the show, you advertise, I advertise, I put it on YouTube, I put you on Cablevision. So that that's the kind of thing, and you have to keep doing it all the time. You can't do it once. And if you have a website, it has to be updated. And if you would do a, do a blog, see that's my problem with the blog, is I'm doing all this other stuff. It's hard for me to keep updating the blog. Right. And I'm thinking of trying to work out something simpler, something you know shorter and mm -hmm. simpler to do as the blog. But what about, uh, do you do anything like with audio books and stuff? I know that's, that's a very popular thing these days. <laughs> oh, I have a wonderful story about audio books. <laughs> I love this story because it, it, it reflects on Amazon, okay? <laughs> Amazon and Audible are the same, yeah. okay? There is also a division of Audible called ACX. And ACX, I don't even know what that stands for, but this is a site you can go on. You can upload your manuscript, and then people called producers who actually can produce, an, they have the equipment to produce an audiobook, can bid on your, on your manuscript. You can do something, when I did it, you could do something called royalty share. And royalty share was um, whatever book you sell, you split the royalties between you and the producer, fine. But you can also, there are people who, uh, you give them a budget. I'll pay you $2,000 to do my audio book, and somebody will bid on it, okay? So you produce an audio book, and it's a nice, it's a nice audio book, okay? So I did that with all of them, and what was happening was Amazon was offering free, 
codes, promotional codes. And then uh, the woman that I did the audiobooks with found a website called Audiobooks Unleashed where you go on, you register your books, and you put the codes on. And people come and they pick up the codes and they get a free audiobook. Well, eventually Amazon figured it out. <laughs> but isn't that sort of a... Doesn't that they were giving it away. Yeah, but I mean, doesn't that also defeat the purpose for you? No, no, because what was happening was they, that they would, they would give the book away for free and then pay me for the book. Oh, I see. I okay. that part out. So yeah. I made a fortune until they figured that out. Ah, <laughs> okay. No, I was wondering because it sounded like, you know, all of it was free and like, why would no, you do that? No, they, you know, if you and they, and they realized all of a sudden, oh my God, we're paying, and th they weren't paying royalties, they were paying a full price. So they figured that one out. And so the Buccaneers, I had uh, a company called Red Penguin Books do this one. And I, I really like it. And I have promotional codes for this, but you have to go through a rigmarole to, to get it done. To get it done. Yeah. So that's not working out as well. I have to work harder on it. You know, mm -hmm. the, uh, all of this is hard work, hard work, hard yeah. work. And now you are an indie publisher, correct? Yes. Talk a little bit about the difference between um, an indie publisher and a, and a traditional publisher. Okay. You and what you have to do as a result. Yeah, there's, there's actually three ways to publish. There's traditional publishing, there's small press, and there's independent publishing. Traditional publishing, everybody knows about. This is like James Patterson and you know right. Nelson DeMille, et cetera, et cetera. And then small uh, press is just that. It's a very small company and they will publish your book and, and work pretty much like traditional publishers do. Some of them charge. And independent pub publishers is companies that will offer you services to publish your book. You pay for everything. If you have a story and you're not a good writer, they'll give you a ghostwriter. Okay, they'll give you an editor. They'll give you a proofreader. <coughs> they'll give you somebody who designs a cover. Um, then they'll, they'll work up a printer file and they'll print the book for you. They'll put you on a distributor catalog, blah, blah, blah. You, I mean, in other words, but you're paying for all this. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think with the first book, it's worth it because you learn a lot. Now, at the end of all of this, I don't care which way you did it, you end up doing most of your marketing. And it's the marketing that's the work. So writing the book's fun. Publishing is doable. Mm -hmm. All you need is persistence and a little organization. Okay, but marketing is what Takes sells the time. book, and 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 you have to do it. I mean, even if you're, I mean, unless you're Mel Nelson DeMille. Yeah, or Walk or, or James Patterson Noble. or something. Walk yeah. into Barnes and Nobles. What do you see? You see displays of every famous author. Right. Do you see my book? You're <laughs> lucky to find my book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So yeah. that's that's the problem. That's always been a, an interesting thing, you know. How does a how does an or, how does somebody get to be J.K. Rowling or um, or James Patterson or somebody like somebody that? Somebody has to discover you. It's yeah. like the old story about what was her name, uh, who was at the counter in some ice cream parlor. Oh, Hollywood. Lana Turner. Lana yeah. Turner. Yeah. She was sitting there in a, a uh, very attractive sweater, and yes. somebody walked in and saw her, and they pictured her in a picture. And so it's the same thing, you're discovered. What you really need in this, in this industry is a, is a rabbi. Mm. You need somebody who has a connection and is willing to uh, you know, curry you along. Yeah. I mean, my, my ultimate dream, which I have done nothing about, I know how to do it, but <laughs> I have done nothing about it, is for uh, Rebecca Eaton of Channel 13 of Masterpiece Mystery to make a series out of my books. Because they have oh. stuff for adults on PBS, stuff for children, but nothing in between. And I would love that. Someday I'm going to write Rebecca Eaton a letter. Why? Because I have nothing to lose. All she can do is say no. Yeah. So, but uh, people who become famous are, I think, a lot more persistent than I am. Oh and they God. also, here's ways on Do they the have agents? Yes. That's the other thing is that you can, you can hire an agent. But a lot, th that's not the easiest thing in the world because an agent then has to like your book, mm -hmm. has not only like your book, realize that there's a market for it. Oh, okay. Because yeah, they're going to make sense. money off your sales. Mm -hmm. So they have to look at your book and say, oh, this is, the, this is a, a treasure of literature, but I, there's <laughs> no market for it. Okay? Gotcha. So okay. 
So, and you, and all agents, this, this is another piece of advice. If you want to find an agent, go into the library or a bookstore to the books of your genre and open to the acknowledgement page and almost every author will tell you who their agent is. Every agent has a website. And on that website are submission guidelines. So if you want to do this, then you will sit there and you will go through all of these authors, I mean all of these agents, and you will submit and submit and submit. And then there's also um, a book about publishing. It's the Writer's Guide to Publishing or whatever. It comes out every year. And they list all the magazines, all the books, and your genre. I mean, this is research. This is the research you have to do. And once you do that, then again, you are submitting to. But the interesting thing is if you have a profession and you have a professional journal and you can submit something to the professional journal and they accept it, you can say you're published. Right. <laughs> now, we have about a minute left. Uh -huh. So I'm sure there are a lot of young writers watching this. Or even old writers. Or even old writers, <laughs> middle-aged writers, whatever. Uh, what kind of advice would you give them? You've given them some already, but what, uh, what additional? Well, I think that if you want to write a book, um, you should find out how to write a book. Take a writing course. There's a lot of free writing workshops out there on the Internet, in your library. Find out how to write a book. Join an author's group. Uh, a lot of author's groups do not require that you have a published book. Some do. There's Long Island uh, Author's Group on Long Island. You have to have a published book. There's uh, Long Island Children's Writers and Illustrators. You don't have to have a published book. There's the Writers Guild. You don't have to have a published book. They have writer's critique. Bring your writing. They're constructive critiques. Learn the art of writing. And at the same time, what's going to happen is you're going to run into people who know the game, who will tell you, you know, get a subscription to Independent Book Publishers Association. And, uh, and you'll, you'll pick up this information as you go along, and eventually you'll get there. Thank you so much, Linda. This has been just wonderful. I've really Good. enjoyed well, it. Well, I hope it helps some of those young and old writers. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. This was great fun. It was. Yeah.